Here's one of my new sites. It's a home from the 1860s. I've got some evidence of when it was built on a couple maps that I have. There's going to be some road noise here as cars are passing since we are near the road. It's got some really awesome stone uh, foundation made out of sandstone. I'll show you that here in a minute. Got some aerials that do some pretty good dating on the yard and uh, places that people will congregate. Going to be using the White's V3i today with the uh, DTEC 13 inch coil. It is after work and I'm limited on time this evening, so I'm going to move fast. I won't go over settings. It's going to be probably mixed mode. Uh, in high pro is my normal settings. There are power lines and things like that that I'm going to be dealing with on EMI. Um, I don't know on mineralization and I don't know on trash yet since this is my first time out. So recovery delay and all that, it'll be adjusted as I'm on the move. Uh, let's take a look at this, the, the house and then get to it. Well, I was actually out here working since I'm a land surveyor and I asked the landowner if I could metal detect and he said sure. But he said that there was quite a few other people that have been out here in the past and you know it's to be expected it's right beside the road but check out these stones isn't that awesome it's my hand for scale and uh you know it's all the way around here now there were some additions put on the back as you can see here that piece right there to the far left I'm trying to keep their house out of the view you can see the chimney was redone it's two stories um it's really interesting go on around here here's a shot of the house uh, just for reference to what I'm going to speak about next but you can see the outline of the main house which is in this area that's the one with the sandstone this is an addition and this area is an addition I'm going to use my toothbrush as a pointer here this side right here is an 1853 atlas note this creek right here that's running down this side there's a road right here. This road is sometimes on the map and sometimes not. But you'll also see this road running east and west and then how it kinks up there on a 45 degree angle off these two roads. Those will be the major points. Right here at this creek on the right hand side of it, there is not a house in this 1853. This map right here, you'll see that creek and you'll see that road coming across and then kinking up on a 45 right there. You see that other road's not, not shown on here, which it might have existed. Um, but the house does exist in 1873. So somewhere between 1853 and 1873, that house was built. Looks like there was something else back here. I'm assuming it's a barn. Um, there's no other evidence of a house being up there from maps that I've looked at, so that may have been a barn. Uh, this house exists, it's down the road. It almost looks identical to the part of the house that's sitting on the sandstone that we just looked at. And then here's something pretty neat here. This is a 1971 photo of the house in the yard. Now, remember me showing you the main part of the house under the sandstone? That's it right there. And then you can see the additions right here and the addition in the back. Well, what I can see right here is I can see where people congregated out in the yard. For one, see that thing that looks like a cross there? That's a clothesline. Well, I know that when you hang jeans upside down or clothes or shirts and get them in and out of the camper, stuff falls out of them right so there could be coins anywhere around in that area i'm actually really close to it where we're sitting right here videotaping right now there's a house back here that's been built which is where the landowner lives now um, but you can also see um, that big pine tree and this big you know looks like a maple or something like that that's shaded area so summertime people are going to congregate back here and up here now i know this is only 1971 but how old is that tree is that 50 years old so that'll take us back into a later date of where people would have congregated around that tree or added that tree to make it a nice place to congregate um just shade spots what's that right there that's a picnic table so picnic tables are great places to metal detect around people there every day there wasn't a lot of game boys and video games and TVs and all that good stuff going on in the 70s there was but nothing like to the effect that it is today but right there would be a good spot to metal tech so from this aerial photo I can tell a lot well there's our first target at four and three quarter getting to 47 kind of all over the place 58 let's just get down there and see what it is It rained today, so it's going to make digging a lot nicer. Let's see something. Something interesting. Might be modern, though. Let's see what we got here. I did hit it. That's a good sign if uh, there's a nickel in the ground. Let me get that cleaned off, and we'll take a look at it. Well, this is what we have. A 1943 nickel. And to tell you the truth, it feels weird, and it's what it's made out of. It's uh, awful clean. Most nickels I find are just 
turned really, really brown, so I'm gonna have to look at this one when I get back to the house. I'm not gonna rub it on it too much more, but that's a really good sign. First thing I dug out here was a 1943 nickel that is a pretty awesome shape. On to the next. And just so y'all know, there's a ton of EMI out here, so I am dealing with that. But uh, look around the edges here, and you can see the discoloration there. That's a screen cover I bought from off of Amazon. It's a uh, matte one that gets rid of glare because I couldn't get any good video of my screen with uh, with the gloss uh, factory cover on there. That cover's still on there. I just put another cover on there that covers that cover that's a matte, so you all can actually see this. Here's our next target. It's not all that deep. It may be big. It's right there, you know, 47 to 52 again. That's what I, another one of those signals. You don't know what they are. Let's get it out of there. I'm suspecting that this is a larger target. That's a little bit deeper, but I could be wrong. It's right about there. Still says two and three quarter, but as we can tell, we're already down a little bit deeper. Nope, got it. Let's take a look at this together. I think I know what it is. It's a watch. At least the the face of a watch. Now we know that there was people in this living in this house in the 70s for sure. It's got some pretty decoration on it. Doesn't say anything on it. Looks like stainless. I'm sure it won't wind up and start ticking again. <laughs> but still, that's just laying there. Somebody should have dug that one. Let's just act like nobody's been here. And as you can tell, we're still in the front of the house. It's really, really bad EMI. I can't really get my metal detector to be all that stable. So I'm just running it with the effects of EMI uh, still affecting the machine. I did go to a, a, a 10 band pass and I'm on a 10 RX gain. Uh, with a, I think I'm right at 90 on the uh, discrimination sensitivity, which I am. I just looked down. That's what I'm set on. It's see, it's doing okay. It seems to be getting anything within, you know, seven inches deep or whatever. Um, I haven't dug really anything other than the items I've shown you so far. No trash. This is the next one. Okay, there's my target. It's not all that deep. It's only two and a quarter with the coil pressed against the ground, and at 18 to 23. A lot of gravel right here. I don't know what that means. It's in the yard. It's, uh, now it's still in the hole. Now where I'm pinpointing is right about there at two and a half inches. And it's somewhere about right there. So there's a square now. Those are always good to find. You know you're at an old site. Let's see what it changed it to. Now it's come up to a 22, 23. something there it's an old piece of copper looks like had little tiny nails in it I've seen those used on furniture to patch furniture when they break it's kind of what they look like I don't know if I can get those nail holes clear but you can see them there but you can see where I caught up with my digging tool there it's actually brass not copper so I don't know could have been used to fix something Obviously it was, but usually I've seen them on uh, furniture. Here's the next target at four and a half inches. Another low VDI, 31, 29. Right there, let's check it out. Pop that plug out, check the hole. Right in the middle. Looks like it came up a little bit to 31 to 35. Let's see what we got. Sounds like it's right in the bottom. Nothing there. Oh, there it is. Check it out. You know what this is? I bet you do. But if you don't, it's a suspenders clip. That's what that is. That one is uh, undamaged. Got everything there. That's kind of cool. It's definitely 1800s there. I'm going to get it cleaned off and I'll show it to you again. There's some decoration on there. Well, here we go. Look at that. That thing's totally complete. It's pretty awesome. I have to put that one in my good finds. It's got everything there. I guess maybe a little bit of gold 
tone to the outside of it. I didn't clean it completely off, but you can see where it gripped onto the belt right there. I guess his pants fell off. I don't know how you lose these things, but there it is. You know, when I first spoke to the owner about coming out here, he told me a little bit about this. I think his grandfather or great-grandfather or maybe his wife had lived in this house at one time. I don't believe he built it, but uh, after remodeling or possibly doing work to it while well, the time that he's owned it, he said that there's giant poplar boards. I don't know how thick they are, but he said they were really wide that run from the base of this house all the way to the top. That's two stories plus the peak. So you're talking 25, 30 feet solid gigantic boards back when the forest used to be huge and then you'd have sawmills you know probably on the farm making your own timber to build your house that's pretty amazing it just tells the date and the time and you know a different era when uh people were settling in around here pretty cool stuff got a real light pinpoint doesn't make a lot of noise actually it's kind of hard to pinpoint it's like right there and you can see all three frequencies on the pinpoint are all about the same. So seven and a quarter. A little jumpy. Could be multiple targets down there I'm hitting. But anything like that above that zero line, they don't have to be perfect. Just respond good. If I speed it up, it hits a lot better and you can see the VDI's raise. I used to do that with an old single frequency classic three. And every time I sped it up, I could almost guarantee it was a good target. So I'm gonna dig it. Running off my old theory. That is the old theory, because I'm having my 20th class reunion coming up next month from high school. I started when I was 16, metal detected, so that's been a while. I can remember the day I walked in and got my White's machine, the very first one. It was in Nicholasville from Kentucky, a dealer down there, and he hunted Civil War relics. Just absolutely amazed me some of the stuff he found. It's incredible. It's one of the nicest guys you'd ever meet. Look at that. More consistent now. Let's see if there's something in a plug. Actually, there's some iron in the plug, so that's helping out. I might not be right over top of it, too. This might be a tough one. Something in there. But yeah, he had, I don't remember what machine he had, but he had a bunch of glass cases and all kinds of coins. And Civil War bullets and buckles and just some of the most amazing stuff you'd ever see. And I'm glad he was there because I was able to buy mine from him and get me started. My target's real faint. It's more like right there. Eight inches. Oh, I see it. I'm just going to grab it out of the hole. I don't know what it is yet. But we'll find out together. I don't think it's a big drape bust coin, but... It's something. See it? What is that? Oh, it's just a button. Well, not just a button. I think. If you can see it. Sorry, I'm having a hard time keeping stuff on camera tonight. Try to scrape away some of the dirt. Some harder stuff on there. Yeah, it's a brass button. Looks like a two-hole button. It's got some age to it. It's pretty cool. I was thinking maybe it was a coin, but still, the shape of this would give off an awesome response, and there might still be more in a hole. But, uh, ooh, about dropped it. But that's pretty cool. That's a pretty old button there. We're now worked around the side of the house. We found the suspender clip on the side of the house, and uh, now we're right around the back corner. At four and a half inches, I'm getting a pretty good signal there. I'm not sure what that is. It's another 50s. Grab bag, VDI. Don't see it right there at the bottom of the plug. Ooh, piece of glass. Always gotta wear your gloves. There's something in this. Let's take a look at it together. Here's what I have. I don't think it's much. Obviously been in a fire. Could be melted jewelry. I'll have to look at it when we get home. Could be a big wad of gold. Don't know. Let's go back up here. You can probably think about how many coils have swung over this in the past. And there's a good six, seven inches deep. Pinpoint, six inches. These are the kind that really get you feeling real good right before you dig. 
Let's test that out, see what that is. It's like still down in there. Might not have pinpointed exactly right. I don't hear anything in that hole now. So I'm assuming it's gonna be over here. Sorry about the bad camera work there. Oop. What's that? Might just be a washer though. Yeah, it's just a washer. So we got a washer. That's too bad. It's a nice circle. Now over in this corner of the house, in the backyard. This is somewhere maybe where the picnic table or the open yard would have been. Maybe close to where one of the posts for the clothesline was. It's only four and a half inches. And as you can see, it's a little jumpy. 52s, 60s. Every once in a while, you see it blip up in the 80s. Signal's still right in the middle of the hole, which is always a good sign. But it's jumped up a little higher. I'm gonna pull you off the stand and take you down closer. There we go. Let's get the pinpointer out. Huh, nothing. A little bit right there. Still on down in there. Thought I saw something. It's pretty big. If you could see down in there still, this is getting pretty deep. I'll try to hang you over, but it's hard to hard to work around it. I think I just got a piece of it, whatever it is. Man, it is in there. Let's see if I can get it. I think it's just a pop can. Yeah, that's all it is. It's a sardine can. Man, that's way down in there, wasn't it? Look at that. Here's my Leche digger down in a hole. I guess if it has a belt buckle, <laughs> wouldn't have missed that, you know? Wow. Not what I was expecting, but there it is. Back out in the front yard again. I was getting into a lot of trash back there. I got a low VDI target here. It's right there at five and a quarter. Really jumpy. I'm having a lot of EMI issues right now too, so it plays a part. I know there's a signal there. Let's just test it and see what comes out. See if it's still in a hole. You can see it's hitting sometimes in the 40s. Oh, I see it. Kind of a cool find. I don't know how old it is. All I can do is somewhat see what it is. I can tell it's a spoon, can you? Well, it could be a fork, but they always seem to be spoons. Let's see if it's got any decoration. I'm gonna clean this off and then we'll take a look at it together. Well, here's our spoon. You can see we got some kind of decoration on there. That might be feathers, it could be a pineapple. It looks more like feathers on the reverse side of it. Got about the same thing. I don't know what that would be called up top there and then a little bit of floral pattern there. This broke off. There is no writing on it. Looks like a heart right there in the middle. So that's a pretty old spoon. First trip out. Found a couple cool items. I have to clean a few up when I get back to the house and I'll make my normal scrolling image of all the stuff I found. One old coin, that's the, I think it was a 1942 or 1943 nickel. It just seems odd to me that it came out so clean. Uh, usually nickels don't come out like that for me. Might be the type of dirt I'm in, but might be something weird with that coin. But this is a lot of fun this evening. Had the time to come out. It's after work. Might as well, you know. So it's uh, not real hot out. The ground's moist because it rained today. I'll uh, try to come back out of here again. I might bring the MX Sport. I might also reduce the size of my coils. Uh, just because there's so much trash in the yard, I could be getting combination signals, you know, missing a whole lot of stuff in the ground. But uh, it's a nice, cool old house, and uh, we'll be back again sometime. So until then, take care.